The movie opens with a man named Mav while assembling his family for an important talk. He tells his kids, Seven, Star, and Sakani a few rules about making it as African-American people. But his wife Lisa thinks it is too early for the talk as the children are just hitting puberty and Sakani is one year old. However, Mav wants to prepare his children for the life that awaits them. He gives his children the Black Panther Bill of Rights, advising them on how to behave when the police pull them over and to always keep their hands where they can be seen. In the present, the children live in Garden Heights, a community made up of African-American people, and they attend a preppy school, Williamson High, made up of mostly whites. After school, Seven and Star work at their father's grocery shop. We find out that Seven is Star's and Sakani's half-brother, and his mother, Lesha, is married to a drug dealer called King. The next day at school, Star meets her friends, Haley and Maya. It seems that Haley is from a rich family and likes to mock everyone. Star is also dating a boy named Chris, a popular and handsome boy who loves black culture. Chris is feeling frustrated since Star never wants to hang out outside school. Star also doesn't let Chris come to her house because she is afraid of what Mav will do when he finds out that she is dating a white boy. Chris and Star are making plans to meet up on Saturday for a date. Star knows that most of the rich girls in the school don't approve of her relationship, but they are too scared to tell her what they think. On Friday night, Star attends a house party hosted by one of the students who attend the black school. Star's best friend and Seven's half-sister Kenya mocks Star for calling her white schoolmates friends. Kenya leaves to deal with a rude classmate, leaving Star alone. Luckily, she spots Khalil, her childhood best friend. Khalil is wearing expensive shoes and an earring, making Star wonder what he does nowadays. The two catch up, and Khalil shares that his grandmother has cancer, and his mother is a drug addict, so she has never taken care of him or his brother. Suddenly, a group of men start arguing, and a gunshot is heard. The partygoers quickly leave the house, and Khalil offers to drop Star home in his car. On the way, Khalil missed a red light, but he didn't notice. He parks the car so he can talk to Star. The two remember the games they used to play when they were 10, alongside their other friend Natasha. But something bad happened to Natasha, and this is why Star and her siblings were transferred to Williamson High. Khalil is interested in Star, but she reveals that she has a boyfriend. Khalil is not worried as he feels that they have the rest of their lives to be together. As he continues driving, the car is pulled up by a police officer from the Fremont Police Department. He asks for his license and registration. Star quickly puts her hands on the dashboard and yells at Khalil to do the same. When Khalil starts arguing with the police officer, he demands that Khalil step out of the car and place his hands on the hood of the car. Khalil obeys, and the officer goes to confirm the car's registration. As soon as he leaves, Khalil looks inside the car, but Star wants him to maintain the position the officer told him to. Khalil grabs a hair comb and gets his head out of the window. Suddenly, the police officer fires at Khalil multiple times. Star gets out of the car, but she is handcuffed and sits next to a bleeding Khalil. Then, the officer calls for backup and asks where the weapon is. He is horrified to discover that he had mistaken Khalil's hairbrush for a weapon. Star asks Khalil to hold on, but he does not make it. Star is left in shock, horror, and disbelief at what just happened. Star is questioned by the police detectives regarding what happened. She explains everything and gives the badge number of the police officer who shot Khalil. However, the detectives start asking questions about Khalil, including whether he had drugs. Star is angry at the line of questioning, and her mother Lisa, who is also present at the interrogation, voices her concerns. The questioning is interrupted by Carlos, Lisa's brother, who is a police officer. At home, Star has nightmares about the shooting. Her family is very supportive of her, and they give her the time she needs to grieve. Mav advises Star to let her light shine, as she was not in that car by accident. On Saturday, Star and her family attend Khalil's wake. Star interacts with Khalil's grandmother and confesses that they were together, but Star ends up missing her date with Chris. Carlos comes to the wake and tells Mav and Lisa what is happening. The police officer who shot Khalil will be given administrative leave, but a full investigation will be done. This causes a disagreement, since Mav does not want to expose Star to that kind of attention. Over the next few days, Star tries to fit in at school, but she is always jumpy and aggressive. One day, she nearly attacks Haley when she makes a joke about fried chicken. Haley and Maya try asking her what is happening, but Star shuts them out. 
Shortly after, Star is hanging out with Kenya when news of the shooting is aired on TV. The dash cam footage reveals that the officer had mistaken the hairbrush for a weapon and that an eyewitness will be called to testify before a jury. Kenya immediately realizes that Star is the witness, since she had seen Star leave with Khalil. However, Star does not want to draw attention to herself. Kenya reminds Star that if the situation were the opposite, Khalil would fight for her. Meanwhile, her father King picks up the two to drop them at Mav's grocery store. King knows about what happened, and he sympathizes with her as he has also been in a similar situation. But King advises Star to keep her head down and avoid trouble. After that, the group reaches Mav's grocery store. Mav used to be King's right-hand man, but he quit to settle down. King bought him the grocery store after Mav went to prison to cover for him. King wants Mav to ensure Star doesn't talk to the cops, and Mav assures him that she is no trouble and he will take care of her. It turns out that Khalil has been dealing drugs for King, and he is worried that Star will snitch on him. That evening, Star overhears Lisa arguing with Mav. Lisa fears for Star's safety and wants to move to a better neighborhood. Star asks to be excused, but Lisa tells her to stay in her room. Mav speaks with Star about some of the unfair ways black people are treated and how most of them end up dealing drugs. Soon the family attends Khalil's funeral. Star is so overwhelmed with sadness and hurt. King and his family arrive too. Leisha calls her son Seven to the back, but he refuses. This causes Leisha to start shouting, so Lisa asks Seven to join his mother to avoid further embarrassment. At the service, a lawyer with the Just US for Justice campaign speaks out against the fact that the police officer who shot Khalil might walk away scot-free. After the service, people escort Khalil's body to the burial grounds while peacefully protesting. Seeing the people get a little hyper scares Mav, and he calls his family, including Seven, so they can go home. At night, news of the peaceful protest that turned violent is broadcast. Meanwhile, the lawyer, whose name is April, visits the family asking them to speak to Star. She says that even though Star is an eyewitness, she does not have anything to back her statement up, so the charges might be dropped. She wants Star to do a TV interview, but Lisa refuses because she wants to protect her daughter. As April turns to leave, Star explains what had happened to her friend Natasha. She had been shot by a drug kingpin, and we find out that he is king. However, Star kept quiet as she was afraid of being eliminated for snitching. Also, Star wants to be a better friend to Khalil, but she is scared of messing with the wrong guys. At school, Star learns that the students are boycotting classes to stand up for Khalil. This makes her so angry, as she has not done anything to defend her friend, and now his death is being used as an excuse to cut class. Carlos takes her to Lisa, who yells at Star for skipping classes. Star explains everything that has happened and says she is willing to speak out. The family takes Star to a popular TV network for the interview, but her face and voice will be hidden. Star explains what had happened, but the interviewer wants to know more about Khalil's dealing with drugs. Star asks the interviewer why they are so concerned with small matters, instead of asking the real question whether Khalil will get justice or not. After the interview, the family goes to a restaurant to have dinner. Star sees King and his goons standing outside. Mav sees them too, so he goes to confront them physically. Meanwhile, a cop car passes by and King and his men flee. The police apprehend Mav, asking him where his identification is. Mav cooperates with the police, but they are forceful toward him. But the family walks out so Lisa can show Mav's identification. Seven speaks with the officers in a heated argument while Star records everything. The police ask her to stop recording, but she says she has the right to record what is happening. One of the police officers recognizes Star as the witness, so they back up. When they get home, Mav orders the children out of the car. He makes them recite a statement that gives them the authority to record police brutality and share it with the media by any means. Star is hanging out with her friends Haley and Maya. Haley notices that Star is quieter than usual and asks her what is happening, but Star snaps back at her. News about the ongoing case airs on TV, with the police officer who shot Khalil being shown as a good man, who has never done anything else similar to what happened. Haley says that the police officer's family must be going through a hard time. This comment makes Star angry, and she asks Haley what she meant. Haley says that the police officer's life matters too. An argument starts between the two, and Haley leaves, saying that Star has changed. Later, Star meets up with her mother Lisa and tells her what had happened. 
Lisa, who never liked how Star tried to fit in Haley's world, advises her to determine the worth of having Haley in her life. She reveals that after Mav sacrificed himself to go to jail for his father, she was very hurt. However, Lisa knew that her love for him was greater than his mistakes, and that is what has made them strong together now. Soon, it is prom night, and Star meets Chris at the school. She is surprised to see everyone look at her, and she figures out that they know she is the witness. Chris finds her, but she wants to leave. The two go to the limo, and Star finally reveals everything that had happened. She shares details about Khalil's life, including how great of a friend he was. Chris listens to everything, and while he cannot understand it, he cares for Star and wants to be there for her. Chris says that to him, everyone is the same despite the color of their skin. He tells Star that he will take her home and meet her father that night. Chris tells Seven that although he is white, he has a black heart, and the two argue about it. When they get to the door, Mav answers it. He holds out a tip for Chris, assuming he is a chauffeur. He also thanks him for getting his children home safely and advises him to leave fast before the thugs in the area spot his limo. Lisa sees Chris and welcomes him inside. Mav is beyond horrified to learn that Chris is Star's boyfriend, but his hostile attitude causes Lisa to send Chris home. After Chris leaves, Mav looks at Star as if she sold out the community. The two talks with Mav, but he apologizes for being a poor male role model to his family. Star explains that he is her hero, and he gives her the blessing to date Chris. As the family is making fun of Star's relationship with Chris, gunshots are heard, and bullets hit the house. Mav gets his weapon to defend himself, but the thugs drive away. Mav takes his family to Carlos's house. However, he refuses to stay as he won't be intimidated by King and his thugs. Seven decides to go back with his father. At night, they stand guard outside their house, ready to defend it if need be. The next morning, Star has a conversation with Carlos regarding Khalil's death. Carlos explains in detail what goes on in a policeman's mind when they come across a driver who is behaving strangely. He explains that in such cases, police officers know to shoot first if they see a weapon and admits that things would have been different if Khalil was white. This makes Star feel disgusted as it shows that something is very wrong with society. She gets ready to present her testimony to the jury so they can determine whether charges will be filed against the police officer. Star talks about everything that had happened and how great Khalil was to have died in such an unfair manner. After the testimony, Star continues her life, hoping to hear a positive reply from the jury. One day at school, Star is approached by Haley, who wants to know if she has gotten over their argument. Haley stands firm in her argument, taking the police officer's side. Star gets angry and pulls out a hairbrush from Haley's bag. She threatens her with it, causing Haley to fall to the ground and cry. Star then tells her that is what being a black person feels like each day. Star leaves but is approached by Chris. The two stay in his car, and Star cries against the unfairness of the situation. She gets a text from Kenya asking her to go and get Seven, as he had been beaten up badly by King. Chris offers to drive her, and the two find Seven in the bedroom at King's house. Seven wants Star to leave as it isn't safe for her, but Star refuses to leave without her brother. Laisha sees them and demands that they take Kenya and Seven's younger sister too. King comes back home, so Laisha helps the kids escape through the back door. They decide to take Seven to the hospital, but they find a traffic jam with protesters all over. Star learns that the protesters are going to City Hall, since the police officer who shot Khalil has been deemed innocent. Star is deeply hurt and asks Chris to leave the area. The car reaches another traffic jam, and seeing all those people fighting for Khalil gives Star the courage to stand up. She exits the car and asks Chris to take Kenya and her sister to safety. Despite being wounded, Seven refuses to leave Star alone. The two join the protesters who are being led by members of Just US for Justice. The protesters find the police waiting for them. The officers are heavily armed and warn the protesters to leave. Star walks toward April and takes the megaphone. She announces to everyone that she is the witness who saw Khalil's death. She tells everyone to speak up against such unfairness and get justice for those without a voice. Sadly, the police officers throw smoke bombs at the crowd to disperse them. Star grabs one of the bombs and throws it back to the officers as everyone disperses. 
Several people are arrested, but Star and Seven get a ride from some guys. They drive to the grocery store to get milk so they can get rid of the effects of the smoke bombs. The guys who gave them a lift leave Star and Seven in the store, but King and his men see the guys leave, so he sends one of his men to throw a Molotov cocktail at the store. The store catches on fire, trapping Star and Seven inside. The two try to open the back door, but it is locked from the outside. Several business owners see the burning store and run to help. Luckily, Mav arrives at the store and opens the back door, saving Star's and Seven's lives. King sees this, and he is not happy. Then he and his men walk toward the store, where several people have gathered. King and Mav get into an argument that gets heated, and each party wants to draw out a weapon. Suddenly, Sakani points a gun at King, telling him to leave Mav alone. Two police officers appear and point their weapons at Sakani. Seeing the possibility of what could happen, Star stands in front of Sakani. She tells the police officers that too many people have died already. Sakani drops his weapon, and Mav hugs Star for standing up for her brother. In the aftermath of the standoff, Lisa decides to stay in Garden Heights with her family. The community stands up against King's abuse, and he is arrested. Star remembers what Khalil had said to her, and that societal problems and injustices, if left unaddressed, can negatively impact everyone, including future generations. At school, Star hangs out with Chris and Maya, having cut off Haley completely from her life. 